September 10th of the year 2010, the sixth work day of the week, the day we call preparation day for the seventh day Sabbath. I hope you all following the Lord that way and using that as his Sabbath day. Well, brethren, let's get right on over into the Lord's Care Ministry, our daily walk with Jesus, day 344 of the year 2010. Roman soldiers mock Jesus. I suggest again, brethren, you write all the chapter and verse down so you go to your own Bible and study the whole context at your own leisure. You can use the pause button down here in the corner, brother, to start and stop this video study as you go along so that you'll be able to read along from your own Bible and keep right up with us. Well, with that, brother, let's get right into Roman soldiers mock Jesus. And to do that, we'll start out in Mark, chapter 15, verses 16 through 20. You'll also find it in Matthew, chapter 27, verses 27 through 31. Then the Roman soldiers took him, and took Jesus, into the barracks of the palace, called out the entire palace guard, dressed him in purple robe, and made a crown of long, sharp thorns and put it on his head. Then they saluted, yelling, Yea, King of the Jews! And they beat him on the head with the cane, then spat on him, and went down on their knees to worship him. When they finally tired of their sport, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him again and led him away to be crucified. Crucifixion was a Roman's penalty for rebellion. Only slaves or those who were not Roman citizens could be crucified. If Jesus died by crucifixion, he would die the death of a rebel and a slave. Crucifixion was put on the responsibility for killing Jesus on the Romans, and therefore the crowds could not blame their religious leaders. Alone, but unafraid. These Roman soldiers were merciless in their torture of Jesus, yet Jesus had already been deserted by all his disciples when they ran from the garden in terror. One of his closest friends, Peter, denied that he ever knew Jesus. Another disciple, Judas, betrayed him. The crowds who had followed Jesus stood by and did nothing. Two influential leaders Pilate and Herod refused to do anything. The religious leaders, who should have been the first to recognize the Messiah, actively promoted Jesus' death. Jesus took all of this for our sake so that he could go to the cross or the stake, the styros, and carry out the plan for salvation. When people do not understand your faith, they will make fun of it. Remember what Jesus went through for you and remain strong. Brethren, our need for daily prayer. Gracious Father, I thank you for the Son of your love, for all that he has done for us and will do, for all that he has been to us, and will be. I thank you that he holds me in his strong, pierced hands, loving me with the love that cannot let me go. Faith is a gift that grows as we use it, and you hold fast to my name. I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord, because he has dwelt bountifully with me. 
Your daily walk on that narrow path will bring you eternal life with the Father and His Son. A Purple Robe Mark chapter 15 and verse 17 reads, They clothed him with purple and patted a crown of thorns and put it about his head and began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews. Brethren, in God's word only do we trust. Never in the tradition of men. Beware the tradition of men that make void the word of God. Brethren, do you want to be with Christ and to salvation, to eternal salvation? Then get down on your knees and repent for following the tradition of men and not listening to the word of God. Oh, you might say, Oh, I love your Jesus. But it says, If you love me, keep my commandments. These commandments are not model for choice. You cannot say, Oh, I'll follow this one. I won't murder this guy. Or I won't steal from this guy. But John 2.10 says, if you break even the least of one, you have broken them all. That means you're a murderer, you're a theft, a thief. You say, which one have I broken? Do you follow the Seventh-day Sabbath? Or do you pick your own Sabbath? You put Satan's Sabbath, the first day of the week. Then you have broken them all. You're not following Christ. That's not my word. That's your own Bible saying that. Check it out. Well, brethren, with that, we're going to close for today. And oh, by the way, while you're on your knees, ask for the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding of the letter he sent to you that is found in your own Bible. Well, brothers, I say it. We're going to close for today. You all have a great and wonderful day. I know I will. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.